What's up, everybody? My name is Scott Waters, and welcome to the Left to Middle. It's time for yet another big edition of the Mail. That's right. Time for the Mail. This Mail is um, going to be a two-parter, um, so stick around for part two of this. Part one is uh, this box right here, which um, shipped to me from directly from a book company. Um, but I knew it came from Greg the Egg or Blackmore Rules on YouTube. So the follow-up video will also be from Blackmore Rules because he sent me a box from Canada as well. So uh, this one was all shrink-wrapped and I took all that off and looks like all I have to do is pop this thing open and see what's inside of it. But I'm assuming because it's coming from a book company, it's probably a book. <laughs> Okay, so what do we got in here? Oh, there's several books in here. So there's a bunch of books in here, not just one. All right, so what do we got in here? Uh, get rid of that box. All right, so first off we have Black Sabbath by Nick Wall. Black Sabbath by Nick Wall. We would never come through a door where a plate glass window would do. I don't know some photos in this book. I, I love Black Sabbath. I like most eras of Black Sabbath. Ozzy, Dio, Gillen, <laughs> and on. So, yeah. Uh, I should, I'll be very much into reading this book. There's lots of photos in this book, too. Very cool. So, anyhow, that's one of the books. And then... This one is called Rock Stars Do the Dumbest Things. <laughs> so that's, well, that should be an interesting read. Uh, Aerosmith, Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson, Nine Inch Nails, Ozzy Osbourne, U2. What do all these have in common? They're rich and rowdy rock and roll renegades whose wild stunts, dumb quotes, and out of control lifestyles are featured in the Rock Stars Do the Dumbest Things book. Anyhow, so that should make, be good for a laugh. Rock stars do the dumbest things. Oh, this is cool. Uh, I've been wanting to read this and I just hadn't get around to buying it. But this is the memoirs of a runaway neon angel, Cherry, Cur uh, uh, Cherry Curry with Tony O'Neill. Um, when I was a kid, literally a kid in grade school, my favorite bands were Aerosmith and Kiss and Ted Nugent. I I'm literally in grade school, but... Um, I was also at a huge crush on uh, Cherry Curry and Lita Ford in this band. Um, never met either one of them. Would love to meet them, but never have. But yeah, still a Runaways fan to this day. Still buy their stuff. Still, you know, even their solo stuff. Uh, Lita Ford. Uh, I've got Cherry Curry's solo stuff. Of course, um, everybody probably has uh, Joan Jett's solo stuff, so... Probably the most successful of the Neon Angels. <laughs> uh, out, you know, well, I don't know. Lita Four is pretty popular too, but regardless, cool. I'm looking forward to reading this. Very. Uh, I've seen the uh, the you know the biography that they that they uh, did a movie of not too long ago. That was a fun watch as well. Uh, and then finally, ACDC at 50 by Martin Popoff, and this is a hardcover book. Wow. This should be cool. It's still in the shrink wrap, not even opened yet. <laughs> So maybe some of you have this book or have seen this book or have read this book. So if anybody has read any of these books, go ahead and give me a, you know, let me know what you think of them. And uh, stay tuned for part two. Part two coming up right now. That's right. Time for the mail. This edition of the mail is once again brought to you by uh, Greg the Egg, a.k.a. AKA Blackmore Rules on YouTube. And the box, except it's very heavy. <laughs> I have no idea what's in it, and I haven't even started to open it. So I'm going to take my handy knife, and I'm going to get into this thing real quick right now, and we're going to find out what's in it. He did mention there was something he wanted me to open up last, so I'm assuming he put a knife uh, sticker on there or something saying to, so we'll see. Okay, right up front, we've got the... This, thing, this big old thing is packed with a youth hockey jersey for... The Red Wings. 
And I've explained in my videos before that Greg and I share a love of hockey. My teams are uh, Philadelphia Flyers and LA Kings, whereas his are the Canucks and the Flyers. Um, so we have that crossover. But being that he lives in Canada, he seems to find these things in secondhand shops cheap. And they are not cheap in New Mexico because hockey is just not popular here. However, in my local town of Rio Rancho, we do have a local hockey club that um, is uh, fantastic and it, and it pretty much provides the kids everything and most of the equipment is donated and shirts like this become um, practice jerseys so it's awesome okay so we've got some shirts in here a bunch of shirts in here. wow a lot of shirts in here this is a big package this one's gonna take a few minutes there is eight tracks and CDs and books and Eek, my goodness <laughs> All right, we're going to start with the vinyl because that's what's sticking out the top and it's heavy. Ah. All right, so what do we got here? Let me see. I got to move this, make some room. My d office is a disaster area. I've been so busy with work, which is fantastic, you know, to be busy, but my desk looks like a, it just looks terrible. <laughs> There's no room on it. All right, first of all, we got this awesome classic. This is um, the, I, what's the first album or the second album? Uh, let me see. I can't. I always mix up the first two for some reason. Um, Seventy-eight. I think this was the first album. Uh, Helix, white lace, and black leather. This is before they kind of became the, you know, more of the straight-up heavy metal, um, or some people call them pop metal band. Uh, this is they were more of a seventy-eight, you know, hard rock seventies band. Um, I mean, they were considered metal in the seventies by today's standards, so they would just be considered hard rock. Regardless, this is a uh, a Cal uh, California. <laughs> this is a Canadian classic, but these don't show up here very often. And funny, oddly enough, here's the other album. So, I think I believe Breaking Loose was the second album. This thing is in really good shape. This is '79, so yeah, so that was the first album '78, and then this is one '79. So, yeah, some fantastic Canadian uh, hard rock there. Ah, uh, Tease, another Canadian band. This is a gatefold album. Awesome cover. Awesome band, great album actually. Tease and following up with <laughs> Tease. This is, is this a great fold as well? Yes, the, yes it is. So this is uh, Tour of Japan, which I assume is a live album. I don't own this album. I do know this band. I have some other albums, but I don't have this one. Um, but it's got this nice insert with pictures of the band inside of it. Let me flip and see if I can... There you go. Here's the other pictures of the band. Sorry for the glare. So that's cool. I've ne I've never heard this album before, and I do like this band, so I'm kind of looking forward to it. It's on the Aquarius label, which you may recognize from. If I can get it out of the package here, you may recognize it from the. Um, a lot of April Wine records are on that Aquarius label. Okay, more vinyl. This is a band called Wireless. Positively human, relatively sane with a band that looks to be 70s hard rock heavy metal in straight jackets and I don't know this album at all um, let's see if I could find anything on here that will help me I don't even see a year on here anywhere it, although it's, it's kind of dark in here so and the type is a little it's blue on there you go you see that type it's hard to read yeah I don't know much about this band so this is a new one to me and that's not a bad thing and it's on the Anthem label, which you again you may recognize. Uh, Anthem label had Rush and, and uh, Max Webster and uh, several other bands. So let's see if there's a year on here somewhere. Ah, 1978. And 1978. Yeah, positively human, relatively sane, wireless. I, I don't know this band, so and maybe some of you guys do. Maybe you can tell me about them. I'm looking forward to checking them out. Like I said, I love 70s rock. So um, this is. Oh, Dixie Dregs. Okay, everyone knows who Dixie Dregs are. Because you have Steve Morse right the, there on guitar. Of course, Steve Morse joined Deep Purple years later and, gosh, spent almost two decades with Deep Purple and just recently left Deep Purple um, just because of some family. Uh, I think it's his wife was sick or something like that. So, um, anyhow. Yeah, Andy West, Mark uh, Parrish, Rod Morgenstein, Steve Morse, and Alan Sloan. I don't know this one at all. <laughs> I've actually heard of this, but I don't know the music. So this is Sweeney Todd. 
Again, it's a Canadian band. I believe they're a 70s hard rock band as well. Uh, this album, 1975, on the London label. And let's see, London label out of... out of. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're not, I thought I swore this band was Canadian, but... Um, yeah, they got to be Canadian. I'm almost positive it's a Canadian band. But regardless, I don't know anything about them. So if any of you want to tell me something about them, I'd love to hear it. So one of the reasons I show these videos is to have discussions about music with you guys. Next one is, you know, a grail by any standard. This is uh, Tail Spinners for Children. Row, row, row your boat. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> Tail Spinners for Children. <laughs> okay, this one... I, this is actually um, one that I have, but it's a great album, and it's the band is called Stampede. The name of the album is Ballsy, and it's just very good Southern hard rock. But this band is not like you, know, you tend to think of Southern rock. You think okay, they're from Alabama, you know, they're from Florida. No, they're not. I believe they are from Canada, but they, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but regardless, it's a really good album and a really good band. So I will be passing this copy on to a friend, and uh, yeah. It's actually got some someone's name on the front of it, but I'm not. Looks like it might just come right off. We'll see. Yeah, it's gonna come right off. So very cool. All right, next one. I love this band. <laughs> it ain't, ain't anybody gonna you know argue with you about twenty four karat deep purple. Um, woman from Tokyo, Fireball, Strange Kind of Woman, Never Before, Black Knight, Speed King, Smoke in the Water, and Child in Time. I mean, it's all classic songs from a great band. And this one has the hype sticker on it. And I believe it's on the Warner Brothers label. Yeah, on the Warner Brothers label. It looks pretty clean, with the exception of a few pieces of dog hair. <laughs> Which could have come off of me because I have dogs all over the place here. So, all right, next up. Uh, this is so awesome. I've got a list of probably about 100 records that are on my want list and I actually own a really uh what's the word I'm looking for uh it's you know it's a show to you it's the best of budgie and I and I love this compilation my copy is crap I mean it's really not in good shape um so I've had it on my list forever and uh, it actually says on my list you know budgie best of budgie upgrade copy because I've been wanting an upgrade copy forever so anyhow I'm really happy to have this he actually asked me if I had this one and I told him that I wanted it so he sent it to me which is really awesome because this is such a cool album Budgie's such an underrated and great band from the UK uh, one of the original uh first wave of British heavy metal bands uh if you don't know budgie and like if you know Ant uh, not Anthrax. If you know uh, Metallica, Metallica's covered a few Budgie songs over their, over their time, so Bread Fan being one of them. Anyhow. <laughs> Donny Osmond, my best to you. There you go. It wouldn't be complete without a Donny Osmond record. Um, Puppy Love is on here, so, you know, that's a grail right there. Yeah. And then finally, an original pressing of Beggie Bandolier. And let's see. Let me see what label this is on. Ah, AM Records. It's got the AM poly sleeve in it. Thinking Bandelier was from. Drum roll, please. Year, anything on here. There's no freaking year on here. This is the Canadian pressing for sure. And I can't find a year on here. I thought I'd, and I'm just, I'd be just guessing at the year because I cannot remember for the life of me. Uh, my favorite albums from them are usually from the 70s and the very early 80s. Of course, um, but you're no longer together, at least not that I know of. Yeah, there's no year on here anywhere. Very strange. And all the other kind of information on there, but no no copyright year, so <laughs> whatever. Anyhow, those are the sh those are the um, the records that he sent. And those are the 12-inch records that he sent. Is also, I saw a pile of 7-inch records in here and a ridiculous pile of CDs and, and eight tracks and cassettes. So this is fantastic. This package is overwhelming. All right, this is an album I don't have. Um, this is Rick Wakeman, and it looks to be yeah, it's a live album from Rick Wakeman. This, so here, here's the album. Let me show it to you real quick. I'm curious to see what the songs are on the back of this thing. Holy crap! Look at that type, man. Little white type on that blue. Really tough to read, man. <laughs> Let's see here. So we've got uh, 
Let's see. What are the songs? Okay, so we have. I can read them on the on the CD itself. Oddly enough, that little bloody type on the back that you see here, it's not the song titles. It's the names of players and copyright information and other stuff like that. So the names of the tracks on here. It looks like there's only four tracks, but they're probably all very long. I'm guessing probably 15 or 20 minutes each because you've got Author, Three Wives, Journey, and Merlin the Magician on this one. So Rick Wakeman, of course, known for his work with Yes. Um, and, of course, he also did some work with Black Sabbath, so he's also known for that as well. All right. Uh... <laughs> Hey, th this must be one of his favorites because this is one that he sent me I think on vinyl and I think he might even sent me a cassette of this album but this is uh, Anne Murray there's a hippo in my tub <laughs> you, you know, I, 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 I really should give it a listen I mean maybe it's not as you know I, I joke and laugh because it's a ridiculous title and an album cover but maybe I don't know maybe that's an album that uh, isn't as bad as I think it is and then of course Genesis We Can't Dance um, which a lot of people hate, you know, these era of Genesis because they were, they went very poppy. Um, so I understand it. But even the poppy albums, like Abacab, the song Abacab, it's like a seven and a half minute jam. Uh, and yeah, it was a hit for the band, but it's not pop. I mean, it, it is a proggy song. It's a really good track. And all of those um, 80s albums, even the, you know, the, the ones like this, though they had their hits on there, they also had some great progressive rock on there as well. So. Um, what is on here? My, no Son of Mine, Jesus, He Knows Me, Driving the Last Spice, I Can't Dance, uh, Never in Time, uh, Dreaming While You Sleep, Tell Me Why, Living Forever, Hold On to My Heart, Way of the World, Since I Lost You, and Fading Lights. Genesis. And then finally, this is Mylon and Broken Heart. Mylon, who we just lost, not maybe, gosh, maybe six months ago. Um, but this is his Crank It Up album. This is one of his more straightforward hard rock albums. And I'm um, curious if this is a... Canadian pressing. It looks just, I mean, honestly, I this thing looks identical to the uh, the American pressing. It's, if if it is, I can't read it. It's too small. But um, if, oddly enough, I just, I'm, I mean, within the last two months, I just finished the artwork for this being re-released, remastered on vinyl. Um, so that's kind of it's kind of funny that he sent me that. So that's really cool. All right, what else we got in here? We've got seven singles and eight tracks. Let's do the eight tracks. So we got some grand funk. We're an American band. We're coming to your town. We'll help you party it down. So this album, I believe, was... Uh, it's, uh, it doesn't stay on here. I think Todd Rundgren had some hand in this, and maybe even Frank Zappa somehow. But in any case, uh, grand funk, we're an American band. Ooh, classic. Pat Travers, Go For What You Know. That's a great live album. Uh, this is <clears throat> Kiss, Higher Than Hell. Alice Cooper's Greatest Hits. Bachman Turner Overdrive. Head on. That's awesome. Got some Sweeney Todd, which now I have on vinyl and 8-track. Um, and then, is that in French? I believe it is. In, in Sierra, is it? In, hmm. I, I, I'm, my Spanish is bad. My French is way worse. In Ceres, say, Cote and Hot. I don't know what that means. And then finally, Led Zeppelin. This one needs a little bit of cleanup, but this is Led Zeppelin 3. And there you go. 8-tracks. I don't know where he finds these 8-tracks, man. They never show up. 8-tracks never show up here. But every package he sends me, he manages to find some cool 8-tracks. If he finds me a Judas eight, Priest 8-track, eight I'll flip out. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, my, my Grail 8-track is... Uh, there is one that I've been looking for for a long time, which but it's Aerosmith Rock and Hard Place 8-track. Hard to find. All right. And then there's two books in here. So let's see. Oh, cool. I haven't got the chance to read this one yet. Uh, Dennis Dunaway and Chris Holmes in Snakes, Guillotines, Electric Chairs, My Adventures in the Alice Cooper Group. I will devour this book. I'm looking forward to it. And Lay It on the Line, A Backstage Pass to Rockstar Adventure and Conflict and Triumph by Rick Emmett. Man, these two books are fantastic. Those are great. Just looking forward to those. Uh, let's see. There's another one here, which I believe he said was the last, because it's got, it's all wrapped in some sort of paper. But all right, so we've got um, "You Don't Believe Me" and "Stray Cats Strut" from Stray Cats. Max Webster, "Let It Let it, Let Go on the Line" and "Moon Voices." That's cool on the Anthem label. The Guess Who running down the street with 
Hand Me Down World. Edgar Winter, grid one. So you got Rivers Rising and Animal in the Canadian CBS sleeve. And then you've got uh, Street Heart. This is Street Heart and Star with uh, Under My Thumb edit version. And again, Canadian band, Canadian pressing in the Canadian sleeve. This is, oh, this is cool. This is Cheap Trick. This is um, Clock Strikes 10. Clock strikes ten on a Saturday night. Anyway, and then I want you to want me. I love that song. In a poly CBS sleeve, which I don't think I've ever seen one of those before. So that's kind of unusual and cool. Next up, Warner Brothers label. Now, what is the band? Uh, this is Flood, Turn 21, and Easy Being No One, 1971. And then we've got... Uh, on the capital label, but what is the Prism? Okay, this is Prism. It took me a second to find it, and I like Prism a lot. Um, Canadian Pressing again. Um, this is N Night to Remember with no 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 n n n n no <laughs> in the original capital sleeve. We've got some White Snake. Is this love that I'm feeling? Backed with Bad Boys on the Canadian pressing on the, with the WEA sleeve. This is the Electra label. Who's the band? Um, Motley Crue Wildside. Okay. So we've got Motley Crue Wildside backed with um, Five Years Dead. And the reason I'm having such a hard time reading it is because it's silver ink on that red. And it's... Unless you get a glare on it, you can't really see it. So... All right. Night Ranger... You can still rock it, America, and when you close your eyes. Epic label, CBS sleeve. Another one of those poly CBS sleeves. This is um, also Night Ranger with Sister Christian and Chipping Away. And then we've got, oh, nice. I love when he finds me stuff like this. <laughs> this is uh, a... Canadian pressing of Aerosmith, Dude Looks Like a Lady, backed with uh, Simariah in the WEA -W -E sleeve, which, you, as you can see, is Warner Brothers, Electra, and Atlantic. Uh, excuse me. This is Street Heart, Have It Your Own Way. Have, I'm sorry, Have It Your Way, backed with You're Not the Only One in the picture sleeve. Canadian pressing. And then we've got Golden Earring with... Twilight Zone, everybody knows that song. That's like an an FM rock radio staple. And King Dark, and then Aldo Nova. This is Fantasy. I love that song. And Under the Gun, Portrait Label, CBS sleeve. This is the. This is who? Oh, this is Red Rider. Vacation and Big League edited version. And then this is on the MCA label. It looks like Triumph. It is Triumph. Uh, just One Night. Um, gosh, that had to be the late 80s that song came out. Um, and then Hooked on You. Try to see the year. It looks like 1986. It's not as old as I thought it was. I was thinking more like 88, but it looks like it's 86. And then Night Ranger, 4 in the morning, picture sleeve. Backed with um, The Boy Needs to Rock. Another picture sleeve. This is Night Ranger, Sentimental Street. Backed with uh, Night Machine, picture sleeve. And then finally... April Wine, this could be the right one, picture sleeve. And I bet this is a Canadian pressing on the Aquarius label. It is. I think I have... It's ridiculous that, you know, I collect stuff like this, but I collect April Wine 7 inch singles, and I have the U.S. pressing of this in the same picture sleeve, but it is not on the Aquarius label, so <laughs> I have to keep that one. Yep, that's 
I just did an episode on the Metal Roundtable, I think it was last week. Music hoarder or music collector? Uh, I, I say that I'm a music collector. Uh, others might say I'm a music hoarder. But, I don't know, hoarders don't give anything away, and I give a lot of stuff away, so I don't know so much about that. All right, we'll do the t-shirts, and then I'll get into whatever's in that thing that's wrapped last. So, we got a BC line. I think this is a... Oh, no, it's not. This is the Prince George Cougars. WHL Playoffs 2015. Let's go... Let's go rowdy. I don't, this, I don't know what this one is. It feels embroidered, but I can't tell what it is yet. Oh. <laughs> okay, so if you've ever seen um, what a Greg the Eggs video is, he always parks in front of the uh, Mr. PG or whatever his name is right there. He's like uh, the, the mascot for the energy company over there. So this is an embroidered shirt from, uh, Mr. I think it's Mr. PG. And that's pretty much what it looks like, what you see right there with the, you know, holding the flag. But the thing is giant. Check out his videos. You'll see he's, it's in his videos all the time, especially when he's in, doing cars videos in his car. He parks in front of that thing quite a bit. Oh, oh stay. Throwing stuff around. This is a heavy T-shirt. Okay, it's, it's a long sleeve. Ah, my wife's team, the Penguins. And it's got penguins on the sleeves. Like I said at the beginning of the video, we share a love of hockey. We also share a hatred of the Penguins. <laughs> I'm not a big fan. My wife likes them. Um, but we've gone to see a few Penguins games over the years, her and I have together, and I wear my Flyers jersey because I can't stand the Penguins. We get quite a bit few looks when we go to those games. It may seem weird, you know, walking normally or just around streets, but when you go to a Penguins game, wearing a Flyers jersey is like a, uh, yeah, you know, it's like the mortal sin. <laughs> All right, this is, oh, another Mr. PG shirt. Or just the same one I just showed it again. I did the same one I just showed it again. I'm an idiot. All right. Then we've got something that's inside out. Ah, this is an Aerosmith shirt. Summer of 1975, Boston, Massachusetts. Sweet emotion. It's made to look retro on the faded gray shirt. Very cool. I actually like these soft shirts a lot, and I wear them quite a bit. So that one, that one will get worn quite a bit. <laughs> and then finally, I think this is another hockey shirt, if I'm not mistaken. It is the Anaheim Ducks, who are, of course, one of the arch enemies of um, of the Kings. So, <laughs> so yeah, not a favorite of mine either. But oddly enough. One of my closest friends is a Ducks fan, so he, he he actually goes to games quite a bit. All right, so that should be everything except for whatever this is here. Um, some sort of box wrapped with Canadian paper. Oh, it looks to be a pop figure. It is a pop figure. Oh, right on. This is cool. All right, so what do we have here? Rush. Exit stage left. Let's try to get this tape off that I got on there real quick uh, without tearing it. Good. Very cool. Here's the, uh, the album cover on the back. How cool is that? I do have s several musical pop figures and a couple hockey pop figures. Um, but, yeah, these are, this is one I've never even seen before, so that's very cool. He, he must have obviously found this where, where he lives up in Canada, so this is awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, kind of blown away by that one, so big Rush fan. Really appreciate this package. Amazing package from, from Greg the Egg. So that's it. Um, do check out Greg the Egg's channel. Like I said, Blackmore Rules on YouTube. Very amusing, uh, very fun to watch. If you like punk or hard rock or or traditional metal, that's that's his thing. Um, so give it a give it a shot. I'll put a link below. God bless. Stay strong. What's up? <coughs> Let's try it again. <coughs> Excuse me. What's up, everybody? My name is Scott Waters, and welcome to the Life to Metal. Gonna make do. Let's try it again. What's up, everybody? My name is Scott Waters. Welcome to the Lights Metal. It's time for a... Damn it. I keep messing it up.